Hello everybody and welcome to the MBS show reviews. This day we are going to be reviewing uh, Rarity Takes Manhattan. This is James Cork and with me is my awesome friend and co-host Norman Sanso. Hi James, how are you doing? Okay. Hi Norman, how is your sex life? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> didn't take me long to break you. Um, <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to be reviewing Rarity Takes Manhattan, the first Rarity episode in more than two years. It's been ridiculously long since we had a Rarity centric episode. So let's not waste any time and let's get to that. Let's get down to it. So I think we can uh, give a fair opinion, sh- short opinion of uh, this episode uh, before we have to go balls deep into spoilers. Um, well, th- this episode was even more hyped uh, by the fact that uh, they not only they showed one clip or two, but they showed two clips, and one of them was part of the song that uh, was heavily featured. And uh, the, yeah, and I don't know, but if you remember this, the, the last time that Dave Polsky had uh, any say in a song in Friendship is Magic, he was writing You Gotta Share, You Gotta Care for Obra Barrel, <laughs> which by many people is regarded as that song where Pinkie Pie is wearing a frou-frou, <laughs> lacy, uh, cabaret dress. <laughs> so, yeah... Um, Personally, I don't know where to start. Uh, but yeah, what about you, Norman? What what did you think of of this episode? Not not being a rarity fan and completely biased towards it. <laughs> well, to be honest, right, uh, I've stayed away from all the spoilers. But unfortunately, me being on Facebook most of the time, I saw some of the spoilers, and um, most of it was interesting. And I didn't see any of the video previews that you mentioned. But I did notice the grumpy cat pony. That one was <laughs> interesting. That was interesting. And also reading what Chef Sandy said from Bronyville, he said that he did not like uh, what he saw. But to me, I, I mean, I, I, I'm neutral to it. I'm neutral to it. It was. It didn't spoil me that hard. It didn't say jumping the shark. But overall, I think this episode was awesome, and I did so derpy. <laughs> I really like this episode. Uh, I think I liked it way more than you did. And it has nothing to do... I can't expect people saying, Oh, James, you like this episode because it was reality. I really like this episode. And reality was a big factor on it. But she was she was great. The episode was great. And I was... I'm not going to lie. I was really worried. And I wasn't just worried because it was Dave Polsky writing. I was worried because... This was the first time we had Rarity. This is the first time we have a Rarity episode with, without Lauren Faust's input and without Rob Rensetti as the story editor. Um, last time, if you remember, that was Sweet and Elite episode nine of season two, mm-hmm. which was the first half of the season where Lauren Faust was still involved. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why Rarity turned out to be such a good character was because she is the prissy character that. Uh, that it could have been the villain of every other show, except in this one, she's one of the heroes because she is so well portrayed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I was really, really worried. And I thought the episode, I didn't think the episode was going to suck uh, because you really, you need to suck really hard for me to hate uh, an episode of Friendship is Magic. Uh, <coughs> putting your hoof down. But uh, I, I thought it was going to be underwhelming. I thought it, was going to, it wasn't going to live up to the hype. And it did. It totally did. I loved this episode. And I am very glad to see that the analyst community finally pulled their thumb out of their ass. That's not a word. And they are liking the episode as well. Um, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a, a community so agreeable on an episode. Uh, uh, probably the last time I saw this kind of agreement was with the season two, the season four premiere that was pretty much loved by everybody. But yeah, lovely episode, loved it. And if you haven't that, have watched the episode yet, you'd rather watch it because we're going to go balls deep into spoilers from this point on. So uh, pause, the, pause the episode right here, stop now, and just wait until you have watched it and then come back. Okay. Are you back, guys? Are you, are you back? Okay, now we can start. Let's do this. You realize that nobody watches these reviews, right? And you're just talking to an empty microphone. I can... 
dream my dream. I'll just believe in the impossible. No, Norman, you, you cannot dream your dream because you are not uh, Anne Hathaway, and this is not Lemmy Serapps, okay? So uh, stop living the dream, the dream that you dream. <laughs> row, row, fight the power. <laughs> <laughs> this is you're confusing the shows man I know uh, let's do this okay let's go Um, so the start of the episode was I think it was okay I didn't talk I didn't think anything of, uh, special about it because oh we established that we're in Ponyville and that Rarity uh, has gotten these tickets for her friends but the, um, the few things I like about the intro or the starting scene was when Spike said to Rarity oh I carry all your bags here they are and then Rarity told Spike, oh, there's another batch over there. Like, how many bags does this Mary need? Well, if you remember Sweet Hannah Lee, she had, like, the be- the poor bell bellboy <laughs> yeah, yeah. carrying a-, a mountain of bags. And when she's done doing her shopping in Canterlot, she carries even more bags out of the <laughs> city. So it's like, this, you know, I like her because she is very much like me. <laughs> I am I am very much like that. I pack? buy big. Yeah, I, I pack I pack a lot. Mm. So no, I, but, I can totally relate to her. Yeah. But here's the thing I really want to say. Um when Rarity told Spike there's another batch of bags, you look at Twilight's face. Look at how annoyed she is. Yeah, she's like she's like Rarity, I am the only one who has the right <laughs> to exploit Spike, thank you very much. Yeah, but no, but there, there's just I, I noticed in season four they, they they like to do stuff with that like in the background things that you won't <laughs> notice it, the first time uh, through. And speaking in the background, if you watch mm. the episode again, you can see as the scene progresses and Rarity shows them the the theater ticket that that she got for uh, the theater play in Bridal Way. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode <laughs> is this show is going to kill me with the horse pants. <laughs> uh, you can see Spike tossing the bags in oh, the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see the pile getting bigger and bigger. And I'm like, I didn't notice that the first time I watched it because I was watching Rarity being Rarity, 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 ra, 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 ra. But it's like, oh my God, that's so funny. It's like background event, awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, really, really cool. And talking about background events, um, Rarity ignoring Pinkie Pie altogether when she was talking about stuff. I guess that uh, that is the best approach. Uh, instead of like being mean and Rarity telling Pinkie Pie to stop, she'd rather just, oh, you know what? Never mind. It's it's you. It's it's Pinky. Right away, we see Manhattan, and, mm-hmm. and it's like it's so cool to see this place again because mm-hmm. the last time we saw it was in season one. Yeah, and with that, it's not all of it. It's just only a few clips here and a few clips there, and inside of Uncle Orange and Aunt Orange's house. So yeah, because not, oh. yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, it's so good to finally see this place and to see the the, the Statue of Liberty and the, the, the different cities. And I was shocked to see that there, there is a poster recreation of cats in the in the background. Mm. You can see like the two cat, cat eyes with uh, ponies into the eyes yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of like people. And I was like, that is so cool. Like that that street, that very iconic corner street of broadway mm-hmm. recreated in this show that was really cool was like nice, modern nice. modern architecture outside of the comic book world that we saw in power ponies mm-hmm. now recreated in in the modern world and it's so cool and mm-hmm. it, it is so cool that they break into song and <laughs> no before they break into song they talk about that show what was it um Oh, they are talking about yeah. They're talking, they're very excited to go to see Hini of the Hills. Yeah, Hini of the Hills. And, and Rainbow Dash is like she's the biggest dork on the entire show <laughs> right now. Okay. Yeah. The, the the thing I like is, uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. What people sing at the drop of a hat. Oh, Manhattan. Hat drop. What now you do sing. to me? <laughs> <laughs> that was so that was so meta. Rainbow Dash is turning Rainbow Dash and Spike are turning into the meta carriers of the show. Yeah. Uh because later on in the episode, mm. uh, Dash is the one that that calls out Tapplejack for being way too oh, honest. Yeah. Like Tapplejack, I know that honesty is your thing, but come on. <laughs> and Applejack just it's, smiles. Yeah, Applejack is like <laughs> That that was that was cool. I like that. But, but anyway, throughout the song, near the after the part where Rarity tips the bellhop for the first time, um, after that is like at minute zero three point four six seconds, you can see Derpy flying. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the. You know what? That's the one thing that I wanted to bring up. And 
We need to stop looking for UFOs with Darby, okay? No, it's no. getting into it's getting into Fox Mulder conspiracy <laughs> of oh my god, that's Darby. That's not that that is definitely not Derby. It looks like one of the fashion ponies that appeared in Sweet and Elite. No, no, People are stop going to be, no, 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 stop she's not. My dream. I can dream. I'm going to break your dreams, Norman. You have to be normal and level, normal and level headed, okay? You cannot keep seeing derps where there are no derps. <laughs> there is no derps, okay? There are no derps. No. Anyway, move on, move on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, during this episode, during this song, there were actually a couple of interesting things aside from, uh, people not seeing Derp in the background. <laughs> like, when they go to the top of the Statue of Liberty, mm-hmm. if you listen carefully, when Rarity gives the scarf to that one pony, that one pony is voiced by Daniel Ingram. Oh, really? He's, yeah, he's editing his Twitter. He said, Oh my God, I'm so happy to have my voice cameo in this episode. Oh. Let's see if you find me. And one of the fans figured out it was that it was him, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, you got it." So oh, yeah, really? Daniel Ingram no. is in this. Daniel Ingram is in this episode, aside from cool. you know, doing this this song. Uh, and also, there are a couple of other cameos from other shows, like you have the Mad Men ponies appearing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you notice that the ponies that are in the office or the ones that are in the cafe, <laughs> that's a that's a reference to Mad Men. I didn't watch the show. Uh, but one of my friends who did watch it, he pointed them out to me and he's like, haha, look at that. Those, those are the Batman ponies. And I'm like, really? He's like, sure. I'm like, mm, okay, take your word for it. But then both Megan McCarthy and uh, Dave Polsky, they were confirming it saying, yeah, yeah, those are reference to Batman. <laughs> and I'm like, what a great setting to, to throw a Batman reference to it. Like going to Manhattan, turns out there is, there is Batman out there. And of course, the, the one they always mention, the, the one that we have already brought up. We see Rarity bumping into a pony wearing a fedora who has a grumpy cat for a cutie mark. I have to say one thing. The grumpy cat meme will never die. (laughs) My only gripe with the episode is that the first song goes on for way too long. Like, yeah, we we do see Rarity being kind and and generous with a couple of the ponies. Like, she fixes uh, taxi drivers... A cab, and uh-huh. she gives a big tip to one of the bellboys, mm-hmm. but it, it it tends to drag on a bit too much. I have to say that uh, with those characters, it's a key plot point for the whole show. Because um, do we want to move out of the song? I guess so, because uh-huh. it's like yeah. But you know what? It's it's a good song because it does move the narrative forward and it mm-hmm. brings you into the atmosphere of how the whole thing is, mm-hmm. like how Manhattan is and how the people are and and so on and so forth. Yeah. And sadly, like us, they take so long during the <laughs> during the song that Rarity is suddenly late for the fashion show, for the pre-show, and now she has to go get a taxi. But apparently, they don't have taxis available in Manhattan, not even for the Princess. saviors of the land and Princess yeah. Twilight Sparkle. Like, yeah, I, I see people complaining about it, oh, but yeah. my only response, my only response to that is, you don't know how Manhattan Manhattan is, and mm. you don't know how big cities are. Like, if you're in the big city, it doesn't matter if you are the the, the prime minister. People are going to show you a way for a taxi. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's, defi- it's definitely everybody for for themselves in the town. However. Uh, because of her generous act with that one taxi driver who had his wheel broken, Rarity goes, uh, Rarity gets into his cab and offers, he offers her to, to take her to the show. Too bad that they forgot the dresses. And they realize this is right before the commercial break. So <laughs> when Rarity reaches the reception desk, which apparently seems to be run by Janine from Ghostbusters. <laughs> And I'm very glad to see that I wasn't the only one who noticed. A few people on Tumblr noticed, that, noticed this too. She realizes that she missed the dresses. And right when everything seems to be doomed, the bellboy who got so generously tipped arrives with the dresses. And I am like, that is so nice and topical. Like, her generosity gets paid off with more generosity. It's, it's like, that's so cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was that was nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think in the generous acts end right there when... Rarity goes to the pre-show and she gets scolded by Prim Hemline. Prim Hemline, who might as well be a, re- a distant relative from Miss Hartswinning. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I noticed that. Uh, like, is there a team going on where Stick in the Muds have those kind of facial features? Well, then again, she's kind of like a, 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 a justify. 
Yeah, she's a fashionista, but the justifiable stick in the mud mm-hmm. because she has to keep a, an image of respect mm-hmm. and kind of like poise. And am I the only one who finds it incredibly hilarious that she was voiced by Ashley Ball? Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, my. Rim Hemline is voiced by Ashley Ball. That, that's Applejack and Rainbow Dash right there. And she wow. is the... <laughs> she has range, so, man. Oh, fu- funny, know. Thing, funny, funny thing, funny thing, funny um, thing. In the previous episode of Little Pet Shop, you do know the main character is voiced by Ashley Ball, right? Yeah, she's the, the, the girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, in that episode the main character met some kind of fashionista. And in this episode, she's playing a fashionista. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> very meta, very meta. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely meta. And it was, it was fun because she, she had that kind of like, she, she did the tail flip. The tail, the tail flick. I'm like, oh my God, no. Uh, but anyway, anyway, um, after the whole um, meeting or whatever things that was happening, um, a pony came to Rarity and say, Hello, Rarity. It's been a while since we met each other. Oh, do you remember me? I'm that one character from the past that doesn't really matter. I'm Siri Pom... Polomer. Yeah. Oh, Siri <laughs> Polomer. The names. Oh, God. It's going to kill you, James. She sounds, she sounds like the name... She sounds like... Uh, her name is similar to the, one of the characters from the social network. I was like, <laughs> Oh, God. Are we going to make, to make the Winkle boss uh, si- uh, siblings now? Oh, God. Really? Uh, but uh, yeah, she was the, the, the first time I heard her was like, "Oh my god, this is the most oh. normal, annoying character that I have ever seen in this show." Because the the, the, the way she was voiced, the way she talked, she was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> "That reminds me of that one soft part character." God, <laughs> yeah, Mister Mackey. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they made out. They're like, oh, you remember me from that episode that never happened? I just came out of nowhere. Let's catch up and see how you're doing. Okay. And this, <laughs> okay. and this, 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 this sorry, character, she notices that Rarity has this awesome new kind of fabric that mm-hmm. looks like Roshar's mask from oh. Watchmen mm-hmm. because it kind of it moves it's Ooh, really cool I love that man like think about it like doing that for the whole animation or for that whole scene takes oh my goodness I love that I, know. I just love that I just love that yeah very very close attention to detail I yeah. wonder how they did it yeah. even in Flash I, that's the thing yeah. in Flash yeah and even in Flash animation is like how do you put the, a texture that moves into animation that was cool mm-hmm. so uh, uh, Suri is like oh my gosh I'm like do you have like some extra I want to use it for accents in my clothes and mm-hmm. Rarity taken by her generosity is like sure take take some then on the, well on the next scene uh, Rarity is talking about her fabric to the secretary at the at the entrance, and she overhears Suri saying that she has made that not only that fabric, but she has made an entire line with that fabric, not only for the accents, but for the entire clothes. Mm. So of course, Rarity is obviously upset, and she wants to know not only why would she use that uh, her fabric, but how did she manage to do it all in one day? And that's when we get introduced to the most adorable, cutest, best, most awesome secondary character in season four so far, which is uh, Suri's helper assistant. and uh, assistant. Uh, yeah, there you go, assistant Coco Pomel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who apparently is the one who worked all night to get those dresses done. Yeah, yeah. So not only is Suri a thief, but she is also a slavist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she has Coco do the dresses for yeah. her. She didn't do the dresses. Mm-hmm. And that's, of course, right. It leaves in yeah. obvious, uh, being obviously upset. Yeah, true. But before you move on... um. I want to point out one thing. Coco Pomel's name is a reference or a pun on Coco Chanel. Ah. No, look at that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So is that, is that really what... Yeah, you know, because it, they sound similar. Mm-hmm. It's Coco Chanel, Coco Pomel. Oh, mm-hmm. God. This <laughs> episode puns. is so... <laughs> the puns. It's going to kill you, James. <laughs> they, they are, you know... Oh, is there a panometer somewhere over there? I think this is like radiation. <laughs> We but need to do puns. a pun count. We need to do a pun count. <laughs> We're going to break the pun counter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but anyway, moving on after that. Yeah, after that, we cut back to the main six who had had a Lovely really day. awesome day mm. uh, going to the shops and getting a lot of main hat and souvenirs. Mm. But their happiness is broken when they see Rarity coming back to the hotel room. Uh, in tears, mm-hmm. hyperventilating, which, by the way, Tabitha St. Germain was so funny with the hyperventilating. <laughs> I just love that. I just love that. It's like one of the things I list down on what I like. It's like... <laughs> yeah, she's like, and then she stole my dresses. <laughs> and, and she's doing it on, on her own. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that's so funny. Oh, yeah. That was abso- that was absolutely hilarious. Yeah. And Tabitha can they, do no wrong. She she is just awesome. She's perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, but her panic attack doesn't last long oh, yeah. because not only her not only Twilight says that they are there to help her no matter what the cost, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but they are uh, that, but Rarity starts looking around the room around the room, and she is getting inspiration for a new line of clothes mm-hmm. and. They are. They all seem happy that she is happy again. But on the next scene, Rarity has turned into Rarity from uh, Dress Dot Mob, and she has, <laughs> she has organized an entire sweat shop in the hotel room. Yeah. And of course, we see the we see the main six working on the dresses. And Twilight is obviously upset because they are going to be missing the the show that they so wanted to go to see. And mm-hmm. Rarity is like, "But you said you were going to help me. Oh, you know what? Leave." No, who cares about seeing your friend Rarity going down in flames? It's a friendship magic. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. Guilt trip Rarity. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm going to guilt trip you into helping me out. Mm. And there is nothing you can do about it. <laughs> uh, th- that was a great moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for For everything that it shows... Not only that she's going to she she is definitely taking advantage advantage of her friend's generosity the same way that her friends were taking advantage of her generosity in suited for success uh-huh, uh-huh. but also it shows how rarity has the potential to become as evil and unlikable as uh, Suri mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because she is employing her friends the same way Suri was employing Coco. Mm-hmm. So there is a very neat parallelism going right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after guilt tripping her friends into helping her with her dresses, uh, they they cut back to the next scene and Rarity has fi- they have finished all the dresses and Rarity leaves to the show without thanking her friends, uh, which. Twilight is very graceful to remember with a very nice thing in. You're, You're welcome! welcome. <laughs> uh, and yeah, when I arrive into the show after uh, Suri shows her copycat line, which by the way, she's, she's, she's too righty. Oh, well, you're going to show your copycat collection? Okay. I wanted to kill her right there. <gasps> oh, <laughs> God. It, uh, you don't eat. Uh, it's not copycat. You, you, you thief. You. Uh. You're cutie Marquis buttons. You're only good at making buttons. You. That's not a word. But yeah, like after after uh, Suri presents her dresses, Rarity presents her own, and may I say I love the designs of these dresses. <laughs> uh, they yes, you can. are they, they are just ridiculous. <laughs> They're over the top, and they are perfect. And somehow I th- I take that as the show taking a jab at the current <laughs> fashion. A state of fashion <laughs> where you will just slap anything onto anything Ooh. and it will be like, okay, we're going to do it thematic. It's going to be hotel based. So they, she, she, one of the ponies is wearing a soap bar <laughs> collar. She's oh like a God. soap bar necklace. And also, what, a um, collar made of keychains? Oh, God. Yes, and a collar made of keys and, and a hotel cards. And I'm like, oh my God, this is absolutely really. And she has a, a lamp shade for a hat. I'm not surprised because that's what they do in modeling. So yeah, God. I I really really enjoy that. In that this feels like a complete and absolute jab at the current state of fashion right now, mm-hmm. where they will literally slap anything onto anything and call it fashion. <laughs> it's so that's not a word. Cool. And yeah, that was going to be the only time that Sweet about is going to say that's not a word. Oh, so there's a few. There's a few. Ah, uh, there's a few already. Oh, that's not a word. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but 
is like Rarity might be happy and cheerful and everybody seems to love the dresses, but she notices that her friends are not there. Mm. There is an obvious gap in the middle of the audience that should have been filled by her friends. And before even seeing the end of the show, there is that, that like, that rainbow shine on the, uh, on the, Cord that separates the audience from the from the actual show, and I'm like, oh wow, foreshadowing! You cannot do it even more obvious. There's something with that I need to discuss after we review this. Like, I have a theory, and yeah, let's move on and finish that. Yeah, you know is, is that if you look, we can discuss it now because if you look closely, the shine on the cord is the same shade as the the, the main six. Yeah, and also when Rarity notice it, like. There's a big like boom in her eyes. There is a there is a rain boom on her eyes. Anyway, she went to look for her friends, something like that. Yeah, then she finally she's like she snaps out of it and she forgets about the show and everything and she goes to the hotel. But when she meets with the bellhop <laughs> guy, that he's he's been very nice to Rarity the whole episode. He mm-hmm. tells her that her friends are gone, and Rarity thinking that they that they have gone back to Ponyville, she leaves the hotel and proceeds to roam the streets completely alone, lamenting that she has treated her friends so bad. So this song, Ooh. it's heartbreaking. Yeah. I have to say wet main rarity, wet main rarity. Song. Yeah, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't noticing the wet main rarity because personally wet mains don't say anything to me. <laughs> because this song is so sad and so oh, yeah. somber. It's like it had the same... Tune and the same feel like to I have to find a way from the season three finale when Twilight is sad oh, yeah. that she screwed up the spell and all of her friends have lost their their talents. So it really reminded me of that that song, that moment. So it was really cool to see that happen with another of the main six. And after Wright is done moping and, and being sad, she goes back to the uh, she goes back to the theater where they were doing the competition and to, to apologize to Prim Hemline for mm-hmm. leaving so promptly. But who comes out of the door if that one... That's not a word! ...pony, Suri, and she tells her, uh-oh, you're in trouble because okay. it's very furious. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, God. This is going to be the team for the show, okay? We're going to have a... We're having a role with that. Um, <laughs> I say we stop. I'm pretty sure people are getting annoyed by it. Okay. But right after they, the, uh, right after she uh, gets out of the door, the main six come back and they don't. They are not upset. They're happy to see Rarity. And Rarity thinks that they all have gone. They were all gone to Ponyville. And Twilight explains that they missed the show because they overslept. They are not mad at Rarity. They are just sad because they they, they, they couldn't they couldn't see the show because they were so tired the night before. Mm-hmm. And just adding insult to injury. They tell Rarity that Suri told them that she lost the competition. To which Rarity says, you know what? I don't care. I'm just happy that you didn't leave me. Mm-hmm. So the, the main six and Spike, they leave the theater. When they are leaving the theater mm-hmm. um, where the fashion show was happening, we see a very small piece of dialogue between Suri and Coco where Suri tells Coco that it's a good thing that she managed to trick them into not talking to Prim Hemline. And she tells Coco not to tell the truth and to just be quiet, to which she seems to be really sad about it. Mm-hmm. And there, there seems to be going so, something going on there, which had me wondering, guessing what, what was happening, to be honest with you. That was fairly well, fairly well por- portrayed. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we cut to uh, the main six watching Hini of the Hills, which is a, such a clear reference to uh, Sound uh, of Music yeah. that is kind of painful. <laughs> So after they're done watching Heaney of the Hills and the, the, the play is over, the main six wonder how the hell Rarity managed to get tickets. And they tell, uh, she tells them that she managed to get the tickets because that one friend of hers, uh, she made a deal with him to do the dresses and the costumes for her next play. So it's going to be, she's going to be busy for the next couple of months. And now that now everybody, every fanboy is like, no, we had a reality episode for the first time in two years and you guys are going to get rid of her. But out of the theater door comes Coco, who asks Rarity if she can come down to talk to her. And, of course, Rarity, because she's nice and gentle and best pony and everything, she says yes. So Coco comes, uh, gets down there with the rest of the main six and gives her 
the trophy for the fashion show, which happens to have Rarity's name on it. And Rarity is confused. She's like, oh, my God, this has my name on it. I don't understand. And Coco tells her that she actually won the show and uh, uh, Suri lied. So there was a forfeit and the pre- first, pla- first place would well to- go-, go to her. So in that point, Coco confesses that uh, up until she met the main six, she thought that it was every pony for themselves in that town. Up until they saw them being generous with each other. So she quit working with, uh, with Suri. Rarity, taken by this act of generosity, then offers Coco to be the one working in the theater uh, to do the costumes for the next play. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am speechless. That part of the episode was unbelievable. I'm going to be honest with you, that part of the episode renders me to tears. Oh, really? No. Up until this point, the episode has had a very clear tone of, okay, we're going to have fun making fun of the... Of the uh, fashion community and we're going to have fun making fun of the fashion the, 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 the fashion shows and everything because yeah it's, it's fun to make fun of them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, especially when you have people who like fashion like Tavitha Saint Germain and it's something that's been present in the show from season one that they like to throw jabs at that one thing that can have either some of the best people in the, in the world or some of the worst mm-hmm. And there is always going to this, there is always this ongoing theme of generosity that paid off at the beginning of the episode. And I thought they were not going to do anything with it. But then they give, they give this poor character that has been abused by, uh, by, Suri. by Suri mm-hmm. to the, to the point of like, she has great talent because look at all the dresses that she made for her in such a short period of time. She's good. She's wasting her talent working for her. So they give her, uh, they give her closure. They give her a redemption and they give her a chance to better herself and do something that is a work for something that is bigger than what she was imagining. That she, like she said, like I always said, I thought that there is something better for me out there. So I am like, that is so good and so hopeful and so positive in that right is generosity is finally paid back and they give her something in return. And not only to her, but also to Coco, who was not, not, I'm not going to say misunderstood, but she was completely wasted working for, for Suri. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in, in giving Coco a closure, closure, they end up paying, uh, giving a payback to, to Suri for the way she is by not only losing the, the, the fashion show, but also losing the one that was doing the dresses for her. And I am so happy that they give closure to this one character that is, like, she's become my new favorite thing on this show. Mm, true, true. But anyway, if there are the way, Rarity goes back to Ponyville and writes on the, in the diary. And, well, after opening the package from Coco Chanel, I mean, Coco Pamel. <laughs> <laughs> you um, were going to do that name sooner or later. Either, why, either one of us was going to. Yep, indeed. But anyway, after opening the package, it's a rainbow-colored um, thread, was it? Yeah, it's a rainbow color thread that mm-hmm. was resembling resembling of the rainbow rain boom that she saw happening mm-hmm. in, on the court in during the fashion show. Mm-hmm. And then and, the episode ends. And the episode ends with a rather foreshadowy, glowy uh, thingy. Uh, uh, thingy on the on the rainbow thread, and that's the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, going back to the rainbow thread thingy. Um, here's what I have to say. I, I think that has something to do with the new rainbow power thing that is going all around the uh, interwebs and toy stores. I absolutely agree. It, def- it, it definitely has to do with that. Yeah. I think this could be the new Deus Ex Machina for how the ponies are going to, you know, um, instead of uh, elements of harmony, it's going to be rainbow power. Woohoo! Well, I don't know how the fans feel about this. I what little I saw of uh, the reaction towards the rainbow power uh, uh, was on Tumblr, and mm-hmm. so far Tumblr is loving the idea. Mm. You know, I, I don't mind it because it's like, what do they have now? They practically don't have nothing, so they need to invent a new Deus Ex Machina to get them to destroy the evil that is out there. Don't know, and you know what? It's well, I'll just say this. It's them going Super Saiyan. 
It does look like them going Super yeah. Saiyan. Like, if you saw the different designs, they have the crazy hair and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's nothing to do with this episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it could be foreshadowing. It could be foreshadowing to No, it definitely, to it definitely is foreshadowing. It uh, definitely is foreshadowing. Megan McCarthy tweeted that the, <coughs> there was something going on with that pool of thread. Mm-hmm. And that it's definitely going to end up paying off. Mm-hmm. Something tells me that that is one of the keys to open the chest oh, at the yeah. beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. at the beginning of the season. Uh, it's Okay, if you guys remember Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, the third movie, mm-hmm. in that movie, they talk about the pieces of fate ah, that yeah, are yeah. supposed to summon Calypso, the goddess of the sea. And when they gather the pieces of fate... They are not coins. They are different trinkets, like uh-huh. piece, piece of, of good yeah, or, a, or, or a piece of thread. Yeah, or like a, a, a coin. or a, 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 Yeah, a, a, the wooden eyeball. Mm. So something tells me that the different keys are going to be like this. They're mm-hmm. going to be different trinkets. They're going to be different objects. And they're going to be rainbow-themed. Mm-hmm. And this is the first one that we got. Could be. Okay. Could be. Wow, we definitely went off on a, on a tangent. Uh, oh, because that has nothing to do with the episode. Well, technically it does, but moving on. <laughs> Bottom line. Yes. This is the best episode written by Dave Polsky. Oh, yes, indeed. indeed I agree. I never thought it would say this one when, when watching season one. Two years ago, I would have been horrified to have Dave Polsky work back on My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. I was so worried. I thought that his writing wasn't good for the show. Then something mm-hmm. happened. And when I saw his work in season three, in Too Many Pinkie Pies and Keep Calm and Flutter On and the unfairly hated Games Ponies Play, I realized that this guy was perfect for the show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Many people might not like that in Don't, and I Ooh, completely okay. agree with them because I really like that episode, but I like, I like that episode in that is uh, a good, actiony, exciting fantasy adventure episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Personally, I wasn't expecting him to write something that could render me to tears, let alone <laughs> make a good Rarity episode. And not only that, but keeping Rarity in character. And not only keeping Rarity in character, but introducing a new character that I absolutely adore. I swear, I swear, Coco Chanel is is going to you turn mean into Pomel. My... Oh, okay, sorry. There you go, Coco <laughs> Pomel is going to. I I knew I was going to turn the, the way, same way you you did. But Coco um, Pomel is going to turn into my my favorite secondary character in the show because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to think that this character that seen, didn't seem to have much going on for her had a, a, a story arc going. She had a character development. She started like not somewhat like kind of like meek, and mm-hmm. then she ended up fighting for herself and oh, doing yeah. the right thing. And she's so good. She's so cute, and she is. So awesome that I can't help but seeing kind of myself on there. And of course, I absolutely sympathize with Rarity because I too have faced art theft. I had people coming at me and stealing either my ideas or my artwork. And I can completely relate to Rarity because it's so, it's such a relatable situation. So yeah, this is going to be my favorite episode of the season. Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I, I would have to say Power Ponies is my favorite for the season. But, Power you know, Ponies was my favorite. Now it's my <laughs> second favorite. Yeah, but, but for me, uh, Power Ponies is my favorite. But when I look at this new episode, it touched on a nerve or it came close to home when the lesson or the whole situation where taking advantage of the good nature of your friends and people taking advantage of your good nature, it kind of hit me because... I'm not sure if I'm qualified to say it, but I do believe or I do think of myself as a generous guy. I help whenever I can, but I sometimes can be a real jerk when it comes to taking advantage of people's good nature and stuff. And, you know, looking at this episode, it teaches us that you should, shouldn't should do that and you should try to be more respectful of others. It shows that the it shows characters with flaws. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is probably the biggest, thing, the most important thing about it is that it shows that the, the, the this this cartoon doesn't have perfect characters. It has flawed mm-hmm. characters. Like mm-hmm. uh, Rarity is flawed in that 
she does get dramatic and loses her temper. Uh, the mm-hmm. main six are flawed in that they take advantage of Rarity's generosity and kind of like get uh, get angry and pissy, but then they also offer her offer help without realizing the consequences. Mm-hmm. Of course, Suri is incredibly and absolutely flawed in that she's a complete and absolute. That's not a word. But <laughs> even 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 she might have reasons to be like that and. There was a delicious parallelism between uh, Rarity and Suri in that not oh, only yeah. they not, not only they showed how uh, Rarity could turn into Suri, but both characters are voiced by the same actress. What really? Suri is played by Tabitha. Yes, that's Tabitha in your main. Really? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. That is Tavitha in your main. That's her. So it's like when you have the character, the, the hero and the villain, voiced by the same actor. Is like you, you. They might not be going that deep because I mean children's cartoon, but it's really cool to think that they were kind of going that way. In that, r- look at that rarity. She is a great character, but she can totally turn into this one unlikable. That's not a word. She has to be careful. She doesn't want to go that route. Well, really, no. Give me a second. I need to see the voice. Wow, Tabitha played her. Wow. Yeah, and mm. not only that, but Coco was voiced by Kathy Weisslack. Really? Ooh. Yeah, Spike's voice actress. So there was it, it was an awesome episode from a from a voice acting uh, view as well, mm-hmm. because you have this you have the 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 the, the main five voice actresses voicing almost all of the all of the characters. Like I think mm-hmm. the only repeating characters were Brian Dumont and Trevor the Ball. Brian Dumont and Trevor the Ball they voiced uh, like I think Trevor the Ball voiced the taxi driver. Oh really? No. Oh, yes. Well, I I, <laughs> I really need to brush up on my wiki then. <laughs> Which was really cool because people remember Trevor the Ball as boys in fancy pants. So mm-hmm. there was there was this whole thing going on, very smart with the with the with the boys cast. It was a great episode. It is a great episode, and mm-hmm. it's it hits so close to home in so many ways that I just unbelievable. And yep, like yep. I said, I never expect to say this, but Dave Polsky is becoming one of my three favorite writers for this show. <laughs> along <laughs> with along with Megan McCarthy and and Emma Larson. <laughs> and you know what? I I should have been smarter than this. I was really dumb because the writer of the last rarity episode that we had, Sweet and Elite, was Megan McCarthy. So if anything, Megan knows how rarity is. She gets rarity. She knows mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. she can be girly and and she can make mistakes, but she is also really good at what she does. What a great episode. Yeah, well, that's the episode in general and how we feel about it. I, I agree with what you say. It is a good episode. It's a good episode. And one thing, I, I need to nitpick here. I need to really nitpick please, here. Please, please do, because we need some balance. Because all yeah, this yeah. episode has just been, oh my God, glowing, 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 glowing. Please, okay, please, okay. bring a, a counterbalance. Bring what your is nitpick. the currency for Equestria? Is it bits or gems? <laughs> you know, I think it's like, uh, okay, I, I see it like this, because... You you have the bits that would be like cash, like coins uh-huh. and everything, and the diamonds can be like bills, like notes. Yeah, but is that, yeah, that like uh, diamonds can be a, a higher uh, a higher kind of currency because mm, they are like paper true, money, true. but they are yeah, diamonds. But still, but still, it's I think it's just nitpicking here, and we're I think for that situation in the show, it's like how much do you tip this guy, and what's a bit worth. You know, okay, I just give you a gem. A gem is worth more than a, how many bits. Okay, go ahead. And since Rarity can find gems, no problem. Like, okay, I don't care. Here, you go take this. I don't need change. Nye. Personally, I think, okay, and that, that, that probably might make sense. But from a stylistic point of view, like mm-hmm. when you're talking about the looks of the episode, I think well, it, it makes sense to have the, the pony with a diamond on her butt. To pay mm-hmm. other ponies with diamonds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, oh, then again, it, yeah, it, it, it may also signify how uh, uh, Manhattan is like upper class, rich, mm-hmm. and kind of like poise. So yeah. of course, ponies will play will pay with uh, with diamonds. gemstones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, but still, it's just a minor gripe that really shouldn't be looked into deep because no. To be honest we... with you, it's a it's a it's a reasonable gripe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know it. Works for the show format, and if you really want to think about it, here, Mr. Person, here's a bag of coins. 
here you go. Thanks for helping me out. <laughs> that's going to look awkward. Yeah, that's, you know what, I, that, that's something that was, that we can discuss later when the episode review is done, yeah. because how long have we been going for now? I think longer than half an hour. Oh, uh, no, we're, yeah, longer than half an hour. But anyway, James, next week, what's next week? Oh, okay. So next week's episode is going to be Pinky Apple Pie. It's going to mm. be episode nine of season four, episode 74 overall, written by newcomer Natasha Levinger and mm. storyboarded by Emmett Hall and Tony Cliff. And it's going to feature a song even. So it's going to be an even more fun episode. I am really looking forward to this because Natasha Levinger was announced in 2012. Mm-hmm. She was announced to work for the show in 2012, and originally I thought she was writing the screenplay for Equestria Girls, uh. which personally I think it will make sense, taking into account that she last worked in a not-safe-for-work animated short. Uh. So I wonder how she's going to do in next week's episode. Really looking forward to that. Well, we will see, because I too here am quite hyped for the next week's episode, because the song... Daniel Ingram knows how to write a song. And knowing how the writers work, Natasha Levinger? Yes, that's her. Yeah, Natasha Levinger wrote most of the lyrics for this. It's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, will, I will have to warn everybody. Uh, Apple Family episodes make me cry. Uh, Pinkie Pie songs make me cry. This episode Wait, is an apple. Makes you cry? Yeah, cry of happiness. It's not oh, tears okay. of sadness. It's tears of happiness. Like smile, 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 makes me cry because of how happy and and cheerful and positive the song is. And it's like, oh my god, so much positivity is making me tear up. Mm-hmm. So next week, next week's episode is going to be an Apple Family episode with Pinkie Pie, and there is a song. And you know, if there is a song involved, Pinkie Pie is going to be around. So, oh yeah, yeah oh yeah. my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. I was watching. This is one of the episodes that was that was uh, announced on the San Diego Comic Con. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they showed the song. They, mm-hmm. Yeah, they showed the they showed the song actually, and watching to that song, it did make me tear up. So I can only wait to see the final product. Oh my god, it's going to be tear jerking as hell. Oh yeah. Can't wait, can't wait. This is going to mm-hmm. be fun. So anyway, this is our review for season four, episode eight, Rarity Takes Manhattan, and well, we'll see you guys next week. Adios. See ya. See ya.